Hi everyone, my name is Shannon and welcome to King Family Farm and welcome to my basement grow room. Um, today I'm going to start some onions and so I've already prepped one tray here and I'm going to prep another tray. I'll show you how, to, how I do that. But basically I like to use these 128 cell trays like this. It's also what I grow my sunflowers in. So basically the 128 means that there's 128 cells and it fits inside a 1020 tray and a 1020 tray is literally 10 inches by 20 inches um, metric makes that a little bit different so what i do is i use these one inch deep trays for this because these aren't really deep enough to get down into a traditional 1020 tray which is much deeper and uh, this way i can bottom water so this is what i start my onions in i'm going to put five seeds of cell and again, I like to bottom water, so I just pour water in. There's no holes in the bottom of this one. These are often sold for um, growing microgreens, and they work really well for that as well. But I really like them for starting onions. So that's how what we're going to plant them in. So I'm going to show you how I load a tray up. All this is is potting soil um, with vermiculite, and it's mixed with one quarter compost. And you can use whatever compost you want. You can use store bought compost. You can use the compost that you have. All I recommend you do is you sift it out to get out any of the really big chunks. And the item I use for sifting is this screen right here. It's a classifier screen for um, for like panning for gold and that kind of thing. And I'll put a link for this down in the description for you. And I'll put a link for these trays as well. I buy these from uh, William Dam Seeds in Ontario. Um, I think Bootstrap Farmer has them on Amazon. And I'll look for them and I'll also put a link for those down below. So let's load up one of these trays and get ready to put seeds in. So basically what I've got here is I've got my 128 tray and I have the soil that I've already moistened ready to go in. And I'm literally just going to tip this on its side a bit because I don't know where my bigger bin went. And I'm just going to push it up into the tray just like this. And you can see I didn't sift this very well. This is the kind of stuff you want to sift out. There's like the twigs in that. They're, they're not conducive to fitting in the trays and um, it makes it harder for the seeds to get around this. Onion seeds are, they're not super small. So we're just gonna So this is just recycled potting mix. I reuse my potting mix. I don't um, see the point in buying new potting mix every year. So we've just turned the tray around. I've got to find my bigger bin. I think it's down in my garage because I was starting seeds down at the farm last summer and I think that's where it is. And that's kind of it. So you want to make sure that when you water it, that you don't have soil spilling out everywhere. So you don't need to overpack it. I've got two corners here that is missed. And I'm just going to tap it a little bit. You can see that one doesn't have a lot of soil in it. But there we go. So that's it. That's that's how I fill a tray. Usually I use a bigger bin with a lot more soil pre-mixed. But I just wanted to get this done today. So I thought I would show you what I was doing. And um, I mean, there's no real... You can do whichever way works for you. This is just how I do it. Um, because I'm indoors. So this works really well for me. So that's it. And uh, so we'll get a 1020 tray to put under this. And we'll put some seeds in it. So the onions I have this year um, is this Patterson hybrid. And I also have a red onion, this Rosa di Milano. Rosa di Milano, yeah. And um, there's only, this one only has 100 seeds in it. This one has 1,000 seeds in it. Um, so this one, usually when I plant onions, I put like five seeds a cell and I just let them grow. I keep trimming them with scissors and uh, when we go out to plant them, we'll separate them then. 
I mean, there's no reason to be planting one seed per cell in, in like a 72 cell tray. It's just a waste of space. And I don't have that kind of space on my grow rack. So these came from William Dam seeds. Um, they're a hybrid. They weren't, they're not the cheapest seeds. Um, but they do produce a nice, a really nice product. And they always make me cut further down into the packet than I want to, just so I can open it. And that's what they look like. And these have a, um, just like a little bit of a coating on them. Mostly it just helps me see them better. So we're just going to plant one, two, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's about the right time to be starting onions here. We're in New Brunswick. We're zone 3B. Um, I like to be able to put out a good size transplant. Um, three. This is not, you don't have to be exact. You get six in there. That's okay. Um, so, but I like to start them really early. One of the reasons I start onions from seed is because this is how I get a nice big onion. If you start onions from sets, which lots of people do, and um, I mean, even I did when I first started gardening, that's how I thought you planted onions. Um, but what happens is, is those sets are the onion in its second growing season. So they grow them from seed like this. And then what happens is, they crimp them over and you get this little tiny bulb right and that's what you're buying at your local hardware store or your local farm store and um, they work just fine but onions are a biennial and so what they want to do in their second season is go to seed and so if they're in their second season um, they're, they're more likely to go to seed. And if they go to seed, they just, they don't have the storage qualities and you, they don't bulb up, right? The, the top becomes a flower. Um, I mean, if you're looking to save seed, that's, that's a different thing. But if you're, you're looking to store onions, then you want, if you want nice big onions that have good storage quality, don't run to seed, then this is how you do it. And they're really easy to start. Um, they don't require any kind of heat source. Um, I'm not going to put these on a heat tray. They don't, or a heat mat. They don't really require much fuss at all. I'm not going to put them under lights until they, um, actually germinate, which will probably be about a week. Um, it does say seven to 10 days, but sometimes they come up earlier than that. So if you've got like a fairly, you know, not so cold, but not stinking hot spot in your basement. You can you can put these on the floor and get them going and they don't really need that much care. So I highly recommend trying to start onions from seed and transplanting from sets. I just think they um, work a lot better. So we're just gonna finish this tray. Whoops. I kind of like the coating they put on these because I can actually see what I'm planting. Onion seeds are actually black, so they kind of disappear on the soil. So, but if you're if you're looking to garden, um, especially this time of year, so we're the 8th of February. Um, there's not really much you can start this time of year. <coughs> it's uh, it's a little early. And you'll just end up with, if you start, if you start things like tomatoes now, you'll just end up with a massive transplant that you just have to keep potting up because it'll just get too big. So this is the kind of thing that you can start now. Onions. I actually have some leeks here as well. I'm not sure where they went. I saw them somewhere. Oh, they're here. You can also start um, leeks this time of year. And I will be doing a tray of leeks as well. I really enjoy leeks. They they just have this great flavor. Um, their storage storability is not bad, um, and they're cost of fortune at the store. 
So starting leeks and growing those from seed is kind of a worthwhile endeavor um, if you're looking to save some money because they, they charge $5 for a couple of leeks at the store. So... Hopefully, oops, that's a few too many there. So I'll link, I'll definitely link all this stuff for you. Um, so you can, if you need to pick up some seed starting stuff, I mostly start things in soil blocks. Um, it's my preferred method, but for these, I can't, I just, soil blocks is just too much of a pain for these. So I like... I like having um, the trays for these. I also use these for my sunflower starts so because I am a commercial cut flower grower so I start all my sunflowers um, indoors and uh, that way I'm not fighting the birds with uh, with my seedlings so because usually the birds will go right behind you and pick up your your sunflower seeds as you put them in the ground so and they love those sprouts when they first come up but they tend to leave the uh, transplant alone. They're not super interested in that. So, all right. So that's that. And I'll just show you, I'm just going to push these in. So all I'm going to do is just very high tech. So that's why you don't want to pack your soil in too tight. Usually I just push them in and then um, I'll actually give this tray a water from the top and that'll cause the soil to fill in a little bit. And then from then on I bottom water. So. Yeah. And so that's it. And so we're just going to put these on the light rack and um, I'm not going to turn my lights on yet, but um, these are ready to go. And so we're, yeah, we're the 7th of February. I will be looking to plant these out right at the beginning of April um, here with a bit of protection. Of course, you need to harden them off a bit so that they're um, used to the cooler weather outside without the protection of the indoors. And uh, I just find this method really saves me a lot of a lot of space. So that's why we go with that. So there we go. So we finished seeding all the trays um, while I did the two trays. And you need to label them. You think you're going to remember what's in that tray. I promise you, you are not. So I use the painter's tape here. You can see I write the name of the seed and the date here just use a sharpie you can get like garden markers and stuff like that i find the sharpie works just fine so that's what i do and i'll show you the tray here that i labeled first um so it's got the patterson hybrid here and the date and that's what's in half of this tray so because what happened was is that i filled the one tray with patterson hybrid i did half a tray and the other half has this the rossi in it so you can see I've got a mark that says this is where I started the Rossi and the rest of those is where the Rossi is. You need to mark that. You're not going to remember. Now, these are a um, red onion, so it's going to be a little more obvious. But if you were mixing two um, that were yellow, you wouldn't notice it and you wouldn't know. So normally I don't mix my seed trays. It's either all one or only half a tray and I don't mix them. But because they're both onions, they're going to be in there a long time. If they don't germinate at exactly the same time, it's not a big issue because I'm not putting these on a heat tray. So I'm not super concerned about it. So I've got this. We're going to do the next tray here. And I like the painter's tape because it comes off nice and easy. And we're just going to wipe this a little bit. Stick it on there. And that's it, guys. We, we don't have to do anything else. We're going to, I'm going to find another one of my 1020 trays for this tray. And... I'm going to water these from overhead so that you can see here it's kind of dented in. So what happens is, is when you water from overhead at first, it'll fill those in a little bit for you. And then from then on, I'm going to bottom water and I'm just going to use that. 
So, and I like the trays. I like the bottom water because um, I am growing in my basement. I don't want water running all over the place. I don't want it running onto my lights. So that's it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you here next time on the farm.